Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's Digital Making at Home live stream for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I'm Mr. C, nice to see you all back again. And this week we've got some really, really cool guests for you. Uh, we've got Rochelle who's coming on from Screen Skills UK. We've got Val who's going to be coming on as well to do a bit of Blender work with me. So something a little different this week to the live stream. Whereas normally we do some scratch work and do some coding in that. In, instead, this week we're going to jump on Blender, which is a 3D modeling program. We're going to show you how to make some simple stuff, do a few cool little bits and pieces, and hopefully we'll end up with a rocket ship, fingers crossed. Uh, you never know with 3D design what you end up with when you're finished. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to introduce Rochelle, and she's going to come in and we'll have a big chat about what they're doing at Screen Skills UK for young people. Uh, so Rochelle, are you there? Yes. Hi, Mr. C. Nice to have me. Oh, it's nice to be with here with you. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you for coming along. It's really nice to have you. Um, you're here from Screen Skills UK, which like I know a little bit about, but not much. So like my impression of Screen Skills is that there's obviously the screen industry in the UK, uh, and then that's sort of like making films and animation and cartoons. And Screen Skills sort of matches young people with that industry. Is that is that about right? Yeah, you're on the right track. So essentially, with the Screen Skills, we're a screens body for the screen industry. So if you don't know, that's film, TV, animation, games, and VFX. So you want to make sure the industry has the right skills and talent for its continued success. And for, I work in the careers team. So we wanna ensure that young people are aware about the various different routes, roles, and opportunities within the screen industries. So yeah, That's essentially. Really cool. yeah. So like what, I mean, when you're talking about opportunities in the screen industry, like that's huge, right? Like that's very broad, like you say, film and TV, animation, all those sorts of things. Like we've been talking about 3D modeling, which is obviously a skill for animators and stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff we do is about coding, but there's a lot more opportunities than just that in the screen industry, is that right? Yes, that's very true. So on our website, if you go to our careers page, we have a job pro job job profile section, and um, where you'll be able to see what the various different roles are in in animation in the animation industry. So it could be from an animator, being a composer, being a rigger, from also being a, a concept artist. So there's so many different roles, and within our job profiles, we write about what the role entails, but also what that individual might be good at. So it helps you align your skills to the specific role. And we also have videos from professionals just talking about their job. Awesome. So like young people could go on the website or teachers, parents could jump on the website and have a look at like, you know, so let's say that I'm a kid and I wanted to go out and design 3D models to put into things like cartoons and stuff. Then like you could help me work out what the skills I needed to start working towards now in order to get a job in that industry. Yeah. Yeah, essentially that. That's so true. And then we also have some really cool downloadable um, resources where we have online activities. And then we also have these maps where you can see all the various different routes and how all the different departments work with each other. Nice. That's cool. Very handy. That's cool. And like, so if I was a kid and I wanted to start building my skills and doing all the sorts of things, I've looked at a job profile. I said, right, that's for me. I definitely want to get involved in that. That would be super duper cool. Um, how then could screen skills sort of like assist me to build those skill levels for myself? Yeah. So we'll do that in terms of we always encourage you guys to make a portfolio. So we have a really good portfolio page to give loads of information about how to create an effective portfolio. We also run events as well. So we go um, we go sometimes going to schools to run um, careers workshops. We also run our own events as well. But also in the meantime, we also provide advice and we also accredit university courses. So if you are looking to go down the university, loop, university route or if you want to choose an apprenticeship, or a college course, we can help advise you there to help you make your next steps into your career within the screen industries. Amazing. There's a lot of breadth there. That's like there's almost any way you wanted to get involved, you can. That's super duper cool. And so I also know that there's a thing coming up soon called Summer of Animation. Is that right? Yes. That right? Yes, that's awesome. correct. Summer of Animation. So essentially, it's a two-month um, program of summer activities. But the main thing that we have is the competition. So the competition is open to 13 to 18 year olds that if they want to submit their one minute film, they'd be entered into a really cool prize where they have the chance to get a studio tour around an animation industry or, or a VFX studio. That's super cool. So when they make an animated film, are you looking for 3D modeling animation like some of the stuff we're doing today? Can it be stop motion animation, hand drawn animation? What sort it, of is, it is 3D. So if you've got a 3D animation film, definitely submit it into the competition. That's cool. Awesome. I mean, did you get, like, is this the first time you're running Summer of Animation or is this a thing that you've been running in the past, is it? So this is the first time that we're running it. So we're working with partners such as Access VFX and 3D Ami to run this really cool competition, as well as other activities that's taking place on the Summer of Animation website. That's super duper cool. So how then, so when you say the Summer of Animation, it involves sort of like uh, being involved and in doing classes or group type stuff, like what are those activities? What do they look like? 
So um, we have masterclasses. So we've so far we've got videos from professionals to talking about um, storyboarding and storytelling. So we've had Andrew Gordon who um, worked at Pixar Studios but now currently works at DNEG talk about how to make a really good story as well as we have uh, Francesca from Blue Zoo talk about how to create a really good storyboard. And what we've got coming up is concept art masterclass and a 3D modeling uh, masterclass. That's cool. That's really cool. Because I remember I used to so I used to be a, a teacher. Um, and so I would take my class and enter them every year in the Cambridge Young People's Film Festival. And so part of that, they always tried to skip the storyboarding part because they didn't understand the vitality of having a really good storyboard. So it's really great that you've got the opportunity to sit down and learn from somebody how important a good storyboard is. Like how when you do the master classes, how long do they generally take? Do you know? Are they like a, a full day's commitment or are they like sort of sit down and do it when you can? Yeah, you can sit down, do what they can. They're on YouTube and it's about 28 minutes or 30 minutes long. Awesome. Nice bite-sized chunks. That's yeah, great. 28, 30 minutes is perfect for me because like my attention span is like a goldfish. I'm all over the place. So and we've also got a really cool handout that you can download as well just to continue the learning as well. Nice one. Oh, that's cool. I love that. So it's like super flexible. If you want to have a go, sign up, get involved with the master classes, pick up some skills and then enter the competition at the end where you can win these amazing prizes, like having chats with guys who worked at Pixar and stuff like that. Yes, exactly that. That's and amazing. And also along with the competition as well. And I guess with the whole of some of animation, once you submit your one minute animation film, you can also get industry feedback. So we're going to be doing four rounds of industry feedback. And it can also help your chances in a competition, but it's also good to hear from an industry industry expert to just give you some really good support and advice on where you can improve your animation, which is pretty cool. Yeah, really cool. That's super cool, actually. I think that might be the coolest thing about it. Like industry feedback, again, so vital, right? Someone who's been there and done it and knows what you need to be doing can tell you at the first stages of your career development, like, oh, yeah, that's cool, but, like, try this. Like, amazing. That's super cool. And does it cost to enter or is it a free thing to enter? It is completely free. It's completely free. And Brilliant. you can use any software of your choice to create your 3D animation. But some of the masterclasses that we're um, promoting, um, they'll be using Blender, and that's a free software. Yeah, cool. And that's it. You sing in my tune. Like, I'm all about the free stuff, like, especially when you're learning and you're a student and everything costs money. Like, being able to enter free competitions to get industry-level feedback, being able to use free software to enter those competitions, it's all very important, in my opinion, for young people to be able to lower that bar to entry and get, like, a good, diverse group of people involved. So that's really, really cool. Oh, that's amazing. That's some of animation we aim to make sure that it's accessible to all and for everyone. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. That's how you find the best people, right? Like if you can ask everybody who wants to have a go, like, oh, there's no barriers to entry, just have a go. You might be able to pluck those people out of obscurity and find the next, you know, Steven Spielberg or the next genius. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. And so we'll be doing a bit of work on Blender today. So hopefully any of the young people who are interested in having a go in the summer of animation can sort of follow along, have a go, get sort of comfortable with Blender and then have a crack at making some animations and things like that. That would be super cool, I reckon. And also to add as well, part of the summer of animation, um, 3D Amy are running an online summer camp, which is essentially a 10 day project where 13 to 18 year olds will be able to create their film, uh, animation film within 10 days. So it's pretty cool. And once again, it's open to anyone. And they'll be using Blender. And you also don't have to have skills in Blender. You could be, be very new to it. And, yeah, you can take part in the summer camp. Awesome. So that's cool. And, again, so for 13 to 18 years of age, which is perfect because, like, we run the Coda Dojo program that has lots of kids around that age doing it. Um, totally free to enter. Uh, what yeah. else am I missing? Master classes with industry professionals. Get industry-level feedback. Win a tour of a studio. Uh, what else am I missing? What else? There's some other cool stuff about it. What am I forgetting? Uh, learn when you whenever you want online and we're helping support it now by doing some blender work yeah. that's amazing that's so yeah, cool that's it you're right perfect and so Ed, would you have any sort of like last tips or advice for people who want to get involved or anything like that sort of any words of wisdom you can offer them before we crack on and do a bit of 3d modeling today and hopefully build would, that inspiration i would say definitely crack on make your own content um enjoy playing around a blender you can create some really cool stuff and just take this opportunity because you never know where it may lead so totally recommend get onto blender amazing yeah you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take right exactly it's true. very cool that's great thank you for being on today rochelle like you're welcome to hang around backstage and like watch me and val do some 3d blending modeling if you want to um but yeah again we'd love to have you on again later on if you want to have another chat about how summer of animation went or in the lead up to the thing we can have you back and have another chat again at some point in the future yeah that'll be great
great. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time and being here today. It was really, really cool. And I hope a lot of young people take opportunity that you're offering them. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I'll catch you later. How cool is that, right? So, like, if you're a young person who's aged 13 to 18 and you want to start making cartoons or digital animations or anything like that, working in visual effects, right, which is VFX, so you're working in visual effects, uh, this seems like the opportunity for you. It's free. Jump on. Learn whenever you want from YouTube, which I know we all do today, right? Everyone's jumping on YouTube to learn all that sort of stuff. I know I do. And so it's there for you. All you have to do is take that opportunity, guys. So I highly recommend it. Have a go. Enter something. And if it's awesome, you can throw it in coolest projects as well. Right? There's no reason you can't do that. But uh, let's crack on a bit. So today we're going to be operating a bit of software called Blender. Um, and as Rochelle told us, it's totally free. You can get Blender from their website um, and download it onto your machine if you haven't already. You can go away and grab it. You'll be able to pause the video and come back once you've done that if you'd like to do that. Um, but Blender is like a really nice piece of 3D modeling software that you can get from Blender.org. And the way it works is like my, many other software the 3D modeling platforms do. So I'll have a quick share and I'll show you what I'm doing with my screen. So you can see here I've got Blender and it's like working in 3D. So you see I've got a cube here on my screen and we've got our plane. So it's very much like a lot of other CAD software. And so you can drag it around and have a look by using this compass. All right, so I'm just clicking on my compass having a look. So I've got my 3D shape there. And then we've got all these different bits and pieces here where we can add new shapes and meshes, okay, which we'll come to soon. But this is what it really looks like inside a CAD program, everybody, if you've never seen one before. Uh, and what I'll do now is now that I've got Blender all up and going, I'm going to invite Val to come on, who's hanging around backstage. Are you there, Val? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, how's it going? You all right? <laughs> yeah. What did you think of Summer of Animation? Do you think that sounded cool? Or? Yeah, it sounds really interesting. Right. And so you do iMedia at school, don't you? Yeah. What what does that like entail? What's like when you talk about iMedia? What do you mean by that? Because like I didn't know until I met you that that was even a thing, right? Because I'm like a dinosaur. <laughs> so what what does that mean? What it do you study? It basically like stands for like uh, the coding parts of things uh, and like game design. Um, there's also some uh, film studies thrown in. So like you study films, what goes into them. I like how they do that kind of stuff. Awesome. Oh, that sounds cool. That'd be up my street. I wish they offered that when I was at school. I just had to mess around in my own back garden making silly cartoons on Flash. Um, so that's cool. So it's like the technical part of making like um, entertainment, basically. Yeah. Oh, and so even though you study iMedia, you, I mean, until you and I had a chat last week and I was like, hey, do you want to come on the stream? Like you had never played with Blender before, right? No. So you and I, like I've only ever played with other CAD software, so I have a little bit of experience in making 3D models, but I've never used Blender before either. So you and me, we're kind of noobs together at this, right? Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have a play around, we're going to make our model rocket, uh, and then see if we can come up with something that looks like a rocket ship, right? Together, we'll work together and make something that's remotely shaped like a rocket. Um, only somewhat. Yeah, somewhat. Only Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. It'll, it, it'll look like a rocket. I'm sure we'll be fine. Cool. Um, so have you got Blender open on your machine? Yeah. Awesome. So we'll flick to your screen. There we go. Oh, and you've already got your cylinder added. Cool. Yeah. So um, you can add your shapes, everyone. If you have a look at the top, you'll see there's a menu that says Add, and then that will allow you to add new shapes. And what we want is we want a mesh. Okay, so we're in the shape mode. We're in edit mode. Uh, and we want to add a new mesh, which is a cylinder shape mesh, which is exactly what Val's just done there for us. So she's popped that in. And you can manipulate and move that using the compass like we had before. And you can see that the 3D shape, guys, is made up of faces, right? It's all made up of faces and edges and vertices. So the faces are the flat parts. The edges are the parts that join those flat parts. And the vertices are all the corners. And so we can mess around with those different things in the shape. And so what we want to do with Val's shape is she's got the sort of the basics of a rocket there for us already. So could you sort of twist your thing around, Val, and have a look at the bottom? We want to get to the bottom of your cylinder. Yeah, perfect. And then maybe just zoom in a little. So like scroll your mouse wheel up and just zoom in a tiny bit. Hey, there we go. Okay. So you can see here that Val's got the bottom end of her cylinder. So that's our circle, right, part of the cylinder. And then what we need to do is select the side bits. So Val's got it chosen on hers. You'll see that's it exactly she's showing you now. That's select an edge, okay? So we want to select one of the straight lines on our shape. So can you select four edges that are sort of opposite each other, top and bottom, left and right on the circle part of your shape there? So we select one. And then if you hold shift, you'll be able to select more than one. Okay, 
Cool. So we can see that you're selecting a whole bunch of stuff there. That's cool. So what's going to happen is when we move them, every single side that you've got, uh, every, yeah, every single uh, edge that you've got selected, all the sides are going to sort of move out at once. So if you've got like a whole range of them selected, they'll all do the same thing at once. So if you push S once we've got those selected, you should be able to. There we go. So if you don't like it, just do Control and Z to undo what you've asked it to do, and it will take it straight back to the way it was. All right, so that's, the, well, that's all of them. So if you just click anything so it'll unselect, that's cool, don't stress it. So yeah, choose one of those sides. So just click on it. So hold shift because you've still got a whole bunch of select. It's going to make it really weird and skewed. There we go. Completely forgot how to drag out. That's okay. Just push S. If you push the S key on your keyboard, you should get it change your cursor to be something else. Where are we? Let's have a look. Okay. Should it be set too? So, uh, <laughs> any of those will do. We don't really need to change those things. So, what all you want to do though is have your sides selected. So, select like just select one side for now, and I'll show you what we're talking about. So, if you just click on one single line on your screen, so yeah, do Control Z to undo that, or undo what's happened because it like changed your shape a little. The... <laughs> right. So, working in oh. progress. Hey, it's tricky, right? It's fiddly. It's cool. It happens. So, if you just push Control, so hold down Control and push Z, and it will undo. Or you can go up to your undo menu and click edit and undo and go back again. See how you've sort of removed some sides? Can you see how it's changed the shape? You just deleted a couple of sides. So if you just go and edit and undo or do control Z, we should get back to a normal cylinder. There we go. There we okay, go. so yeah. you just select, like, just choose one side for now. So you click on one of those single lines on the edge of your circle. All right, so yeah, click away so you have nothing selected and then click one single line on that circle. No, we don't we don't want to move anything, just have a side selected and then we'll we'll change how it's set up on the shape. Cool. So now if you push S, push S on your keyboard once you've got a side selected. And you get this, right? So now you can start moving stuff around. Should be able to drag that shape in. Yeah, Stanto's got it right, right? All the shortcuts, there's like a whole bunch of them. Um, and some of them are like easier to use than others. Like when you're working in animation and things like that, they're usually the same letter. Um, but working in shapes and things, they can. there's like a whole bunch of them and they're a little bit different. Right, so, okay, so we're starting to move stuff around. So if you rotate your shape a little bit, so once you're ready with it, so if you click anywhere, we can undo it if you don't like it, because I think what's happened is we've selected a weird side. So if you just go, yeah, right. So choose a side. Edit, undo, cool. So you've got a side select. So hover over the center of that side with your mouse at the moment. And then push S now, right? So it's going to adapt to where you've got it. There we go. And you can move it, right? And it's twisting because I think we were off center, right? So what it does is it moves shapes. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. So this is my screen now. And you can see that I'm hovered over. So I've clicked on the Z here so that I'm looking directly at the top of my shape. And you'll see with the compass, you can move it quickly. So I can push X or Y. Z and it will spin my shape to the axis that I want to look at. And so if I just click away so I have nothing selected, you see nothing here is quite white. And then I'll select one of my sides. All right, so I've got a vertices selected because I'm on vertices selection. So I go to side selection, choose a side, 
If I push S over the top, I can now start shifting stuff around, right? So what I want to do is, where am I? Okay. So I want to grab this side and this side and this side and this side. So I'm holding shift to select multiple sides. Hover a little, push S, and I can start pulling those out as I push S. And I push S again and I can drag them a little further. And you see as I start to turn sideways on my shape, oh, let's flip that around. I've got uh, started to change my shape and it's dragged out a few of those sides for me. It's pulled those fins out now. And it's starting to look like a rocket. So if I put Control Z to go back because they weren't quite the sides I wanted, select nothing, select, and then select the opposite side. Which one's that one? It's that one and that one. And that one. And again, hovering over the center of my side, I push S and I can just drag them out and it's starting to look a bit more symmetrical now. Cool. So, switch back to your screen, Val. How's it going? I'm terrible at getting the sun to. Oh, no, I did not mean to round your image. Oh, no. <laughs> Having the render takes ages when you're trying to get the picture going. Oh, <laughs> that's the render. <laughs> I feel like you can. All right. So, like... All right. So you're kind of resizing Sorry. stuff. So you're making it like in instead of just moving it or dragging it out, you're sort of resizing it. I wonder. I wonder what you've changed. So, there, oh, no, still shrinking and growing rather than moving it. So, when you brought up that menu before, how did you get that up? Let's see. Remember, we had that circle menu? And it was asking you what you wanted to do. I think it's resizing instead of moving it. Oh, this one. Uh, I think that did recently. Right, so where were we before? So it's asking us where we want it to snap to. So go for selection to cursor. And let's see if that offers us the thing we're after. No. No, it doesn't. Okay, interesting. What have we set up with? So, All right, so go to the top view of it again, and let's see if we can get it to fix this way. See if what we've done is fixed it. Interesting. So on the right there, you've got it selected as which, which which menu have you got pulled up? Has it got the transform menu open on the right? So if you over there, you see yeah. on the right hand side where you've got it like should say cylinder. What have we got? You've got it set to scene. Interesting. So we need that to be your cylinder. So how do we change that? So go to go to object mode. So up there where it says edit mode, go to object mode. Can you choose your cylinder as a shape? Can you just select it? Yeah. You can, okay. So you've got your rendering and sampling, which is not what we want to have open. Are you definitely in 3D modeling mode? You're not in like animation mode or anything like that? Open a new project and just go general. Oh, yeah. that's probably it. Probably why, I think you're in VFX mode. Oh. 
Okay, cool. All right, so let's start from here because from here I can sort of get us to where we need to be. So select that cube and push X. So just press X, yep, and gone. Awesome. And so now up the top you'll see where it says add. Pull that down and what you want to add is a mesh. Yeah, and we want a cylinder mesh. So across that top menu where it says mesh, pull in a cylinder. Cool, okay, so now I think we're onto it. So looking from the top, Yeah, and just grab, so go to edit mode now, because we're in object mode. So object mode grabs the whole shape. Edit mode means we can grab a piece or two. So click away so that nothing is selected. Grab one side on that cylinder at the top there, and we'll just see if we can move it now. Now push S and see if we can get that to shift the way we want. That's still resizing. I don't know why it's doing that. That's super weird. What do we got going on with that? So cylinder selected. We've got it on transform, so that should be fine. Don't know what we're doing wrong. This is crazy. This is driving me nuts. I hate when this happens because I had it okay, and now we can't get it to work. I don't know what's going on either. Okay. You don't know, do you, Mark? We've got Mark somewhere. He knows how to drive this. What are we doing wrong? I can't work it out. Let's see. <laughs> so, so user perspective, where are we at? Selected. So this is what happens when you try and learn new software, everybody. It starts getting a little bit tricky and when you don't know what's oh. going on. What have we got on re Oh, you know why? Because you've got a thing down the bottom that says resize. Have a look down the bottom left of your screen. So if you undo that. Why? So choose the side. Yeah. And then when you press S, it brings up a thing and then it says resize on it. It was in your screen. I'm not sure why that is because I don't have it on mine. Hey, figured it out. Okay. So what did you, you change? To press to G. You've got to press G. Ah, for move. Yes, I see. So we had it on resize instead of move. Nice solve. Oh, yeah, Stanto's right again. Every time you're doing it wrong, that's the one you learn the most, right? Like fail faster is the tech anthem. The more times you make a mistake, the faster you get to the right answer. I can't remember who yeah, said there it. Hey, there we it's go. Similar. We're on it. <laughs> Got it. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So have we got four fins at the base of the rocket now? Yes. Awesome. Been, uh, oh, yeah, we got it. a bit cool. wonky, but oh, well. That's all right. That's I think it's cool. Part. No, that's cool. So what we want to do now is we need to – so if you go to your rocket again, so let's go zoom out a bit so you can see the whole thing. All right, so what you want to do is if you select the face, so we need to go to face select mode. So you'll see that sort of at the top there. Uh, that's the one, face select. And so flip your rocket around so you're looking at the top part of it. Awesome, and so that's it. So you select that top face, right? So face select means you get the whole flat part of the shape, you get that whole face, yeah? And we wanna extrude. So on the left-hand side, you see in that menu of bits and pieces, there's one with a cube that looks like it's wearing a green lid. So like there's a pencil, and then there's a protractor, and then there's a box with a green lid. Yeah, awesome. So if you go to your Y now, you should be able to drag that whole face up. 
it will extrude a bit. There we go. Yeah, now you're talking. So what we've done there is we're doing what's called extruding. And so we take that shape and then instead of dragging the whole shape and making it stretch, what we're actually doing is taking a piece and just extending that piece out. So the rest of it stays the same and we just extend it until your rocket is as tall as you want it to be. Cool. Nice. That's cool. Starting to look a bit more like a rocket now. That's good. Oh. Cool. So choose that top face again and that circle face that's at the top of your rocket. And I'll show you the shortcut now, now that we got it working. You just grab that top face, yep, and then push E on your keyboard for extrude. We should be able to drag another bit, which we're going to turn into the pointy cone of our rocket. Well, I can't with you again. It's kind of spaced out there, sorry. That's all right. It's like fade. Yeah, yeah, so choose that top face. That's the way. And then if you get into a view where you can sort of see it a bit better, like your Y or your X view, just click on one of those knobs on the compass to get it to snap to 90 degree. That's the way. So you should be able to push E and just drag that side down again. And this is going to be the cone part. So we're going to take one end of that cylinder and collapse it all in so that it's like a point. Awesome. Nice. Okay, so have you got the whole face selected on top still? Yeah, you do, I think. Oh, that's an interesting extrusion. Is it done? There we go. Cool. So you negatively extruded. So you dropped it back down inside itself. So that's it. You want to bring it out? Bring it out just a bit more. Or we can, yeah, that's the way. Pop it out. Cool. And so now, yep, you've got that face. So again, select the top face. This time, uh, you want to use a different keyboard shortcut. We're going to resize it. So push S and you'll be able to resize the whole thing. Oh. There we go, and make it a point. Oh. Nice. Okay. So, it's like, a, ro it's like a rocket in a bucket. It's class. <laughs> So you should be able to get rid of that top shape. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to select the faces and remove them. Can you push X to get rid of it? Yeah, delete. Oh. Oh. Is this... That's cool. Tell you what, I've got an idea. Step back a few. So just do control Z and tap Z a few times and we'll just take it backwards until it's back to where you want it. And we'll get rid of the bucket. Uh, I'm not sure. If we go to there, stand it up a bit more. Like that. Yeah, and then S to shrink it. I wonder if we're still going to get the bucket. A bit. We're getting there, though. We are getting there in progress. Cool, cool. I think that's it, and it's fiddly, right? And you, you know, ah, here we go. I like this idea. And then we can resize that bit to just be a top part. Hey, nice. Well played. Ooh. Nice. We finally did it. Awesome. Well done. That's cool. So, how big is your rocket? Your rocket's pretty tall, right? That's cool. Yeah. I like it. So, if you wanted to, we could resize your entire rocket down, right? So, like, you can go to object mode and then push S, and the whole shape will change size this time. Oh, yeah. That's probably the best. I, well, I like making stuff like a larger size and then yeah. shrinking it down because that we can constantly you can see the larger like you can just see the larger stuff definitely yeah you can you can play a lot more with the scale and stuff when it's like when it's big you can get into the detail of it a lot better and then once it shrinks down that detail sort of is retained right it's much easier to work on a big project and make it small than it is to work on something tiny and fiddle away with it and then have to try and change the size to make it bigger so that's cool Nice, yeah. getting there. We got a rocket. 
So the next thing we want to do is we're going to show everybody how to sort of color the rocket in. So if you choose the whole rocket in object mode, on the right hand side, you'll see like um, there's a whole bunch of colored spots. So on the left, we've got all those shapes and things. On the right, we've got all the different menus. There'll be one that looks like a red ball, like a black and red ball. Yeah, that's the one, material properties, that's it. Okay, so materials, when we're working in 3D modeling, materials is like the paint job that you slap on something. And so you can make a whole bunch of different paints before you use them, all right? So you could make one that's really complicated and looks like the night sky, or you can make one that's really simple and is just blue, right? And you can choose what those things that you want to be. So it's pretty easy to add a new material. If you just click new on the right hand side there, Material, so we've got a new material. Yeah, cool, you're onto it. And we're going to change the properties of it. So you'll see this one that says base color. We just want to change the base color of this material. Yeah, there we go. Darker. Oh my god. Awesome. So once you've got a color you like, yeah. Oh, don't know what happened there. I have to do more things quicker. Oh, like that. Yeah, cool. And then you want to apply that to your rocket. So once you've got your rocket chosen, you should be able to apply your materials in that menu. That's it. So you go up to the top. So choose the material, choose the rocket, and you should be able to apply that material. Yeah, call it something. So creative. So you just you assign that material. Yeah. So make sure, have you got a thing on it that says use nodes? I can't quite see your screen as clearly as I would like from here. Have you got, when you go back to the material properties of it, yeah, select use nodes, make sure that's not selected. So up the top of that menu, there's like a button that says use nodes, it's colored blue. Yeah, that's the one. So click that, undo that. And then you wanna have that selected and you wanna assign that material. Yeah, change base color, there we go. All right, so when you're using the node, it's looking at different stuff. What we want to do is apply this material to the whole shape. And so we can just change the color of our rocket. So making sure you've got use nodes deselected is really important when you're doing that, especially if you're working with like major base paint. So once it's a color like, yeah, messing with the metallicness of it, nice. Awesome. Cool. And then so from there, what we're going to do is we're going to like add a bunch of different colors to it, right? So if you select like the edges of the fins or the sides of the fins, so go to edit mode again and make sure you're in face select mode in edit. So you want to have, yep, you've got face select on, that's cool. So if you hold shift and select a bunch of those sides, we can make new materials and make them all different colors. We can make like a rainbow rocket, no problem. My inner Pokemon nerd couldn't help but laugh at Rainbow Rocket. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I had to slide it in there. <laughs> I like that. Oh. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And so if you make another material that's got another base color, we can just apply that to those fins and it's there. We just assign that new material to that new piece of the shape and it makes it that color. Yeah, cool, no nodes, base color. Oh. Awesome.
that's cool and so you could do the same thing as well so like if you then sort of randomly picked um some of the different sides or the little the independent sort of um singular sides on it you can just add stripes Cool. It's on I don't have any idea of this. That's cool. <laughs> That's it. All right, so you hold shift exactly to select more than one side. That's really cool. Awesome. Wow. That's cool. Nice one. That's incredible. Yeah, it's a pretty cool toy, right? Like once you get used to it, and that's the thing, like we're sort of driving through it, sometimes you make errors and we undo them. We work out why it's doing weird stuff, or sometimes you have to check the instructions, right? But once you get there, once you know how to drive it, you do all right. It doesn't take as long next time. Yeah. That's cool. And so, I mean, you can play with the different things in the shapes as well. So when you're playing with those materials, if you're looking at, like, the base color is obviously the color of the thing. Metallic, you've worked out, makes it look more or less shiny when you're talking about changing the light. So if you make the metallic go way up and then play with the compass, you'll actually see the shine change on the different parts of your rocket as you move around it. Like, the light source stays where it is, and it looks like you're getting reflection. Um, and you can also get, like, you can change the roughness of it so that, you know, the rougher it is, the less it sort of reflects in that way. It can make it look very different. And then you can change the specular of it, uh, which, what does that do? It's like, like uh, specular reflection. I don't really know how to explain it. It's like how definite the light angle is that reflects off the side, I think. But I could be wrong there. Yeah. That's cool. It's looking like a proper toy box rocket now. It's good. Yeah, so you can see playing with the roughness changes. And then you can like you can slide the specular up and down as well, right? And change the way that that reflects. It's, yeah, it's awesome. That's cool. And so that, right, that 3D model that you've just thrown together, you can now take that shape and put it into a 3D animation. You could use it as a model for a video game that you were making, like anything like that. You can take it and add it in. Like we can take that, take that image out and Photoshop it into a bunch of photos. Like there's all sorts of things we can do. Once you've made the shape and you've got it, you can use it in anything you want to use it in. Right? And that's what yeah. VFX guys do all the time. Video game model guys, like guys I know who work in the games industry, they make things and then they like take it and they replicate it a million times, right? If you look really closely at a lot of games, there's like maybe four or five different kinds of tree um, that are just replicated a million times, but you don't notice because your brain just sort of ignores the tiny detail. But it notices that the, the, the variation is there inside the game. So, yeah, it's cool. That's cool, Val. How'd you, did you like that? Like we sort of got there in the end, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It took a bit of messing about, but like you eventually get the also the best part like you get to learn everything yeah definitely. Along. yeah yeah it's the best way to learn stuff like like we said before the best way to learn stuff is to make mistakes right like it's uh, who was it? i think it was edison right it's like i didn't learn nine thousand wrong ways to do it but i got to the right one right like i know a whole bunch of ways not to do stuff and that's great and now i only need one right way to do it so that i can continue to keep working and that's kind of where we got here
we work some stuff mm -hmm. out. I learned some stuff today for sure about playing with Blender. Like I say, like I'm a complete noob to Blender. So working out the different pieces and why things didn't go, that was really cool. And yeah, Stanto again, he's on fire today. Unity is an excellent game engine, which is free. That's mainly the engine that the guys I know, they mostly work in Unity unless the company they work for has a special engine, a proprietary engine. But Unity is the perfect place to start making video games. That's where I used to teach everybody to make video games. We used to make portal clones uh, in some <laughs> games, which is like really fun. Portal is one of my favorite games ever. So that, portal, so, well. yeah, that's awesome. So, I mean, do you have any more questions about Blender? Like, don't get too technical on me, right? Like, I'm also a noob, but like making projects, <laughs> doing those sorts of things. Like, is there anything that you were keen to ask before we like say goodbye for this week? No, actually, because like I've been able to, uh, like, m most of my worries were, were about like getting like how to get the cone up and out. But we solved that, we solved how to color. So, yeah, I think that's all of my where you've gone awesome that's great that was really fun i had fun today messing around on blender with you anyway like even though we had to muddle through and we got some stuff wrong we got there in the end then you got a pretty decent rocket ship out of it right yeah nice one cool all right well thanks val it was awesome to have you this week and um, mm. hopefully we'll have you back in the future and we'll do some other stuff yeah awesome all right, cool. So that was Blend, everybody. Like, we had a play with it. You can see that it's quite complicated to sort of learn 3D modeling and stuff like that. So, like, if you have a look at my one, I can show you, like, that's my rocket ship. I kind of knocked up a burgundy-looking rocket ship for myself. Um, but, again, like, you know, it takes time to learn these things. It takes time to get comfortable with them and understand how they all work. But once you keep practicing, you'll stumble for a little while, and then you'll get used to understanding what the shortcuts were, how things work, how it's supposed to go, what you can do to fix the things you did wrong, and you'll start becoming a pro in no time. All right? It's always very hard to start off, but once you get going, you get a lot of, like, expertise. You get a lot more skill. And the first step to being good at anything is being terrible at it. Right? Everyone who's amazing at anything started off terrible and they practiced and they pushed through and they all became amazing in the end. And that's that's what we have to do, really, is just carry on. So if you're making cool stuff at home and you're doing animations, you're making 3D models, doing whatever it is that you're doing, keep on with it. And like we have a lot of stuff here at Raspberry Pi where we can help you get involved with things like Coolest Projects. So the Coolest Projects competition is open for young people to enter now. If you're making an animation, enter that. If you're making a video game, enter that. Or a gadget, enter that. Something in Scratch, throw that into it. Right? So we've had all of our judges announced today as well. We've got some really cool celebrity judges. Uh, we've got astronaut Tim Peake. We've got Mitch Resnick, one of the guys who invented Scratch. Uh, we've got Limor Freed, who comes from Adafruit. We've got Hayatun Silem, who's the CEO of the Royal Academy of Engineering. So we've got highbrow with that one. And we've also got our own Eben Upton, who's coming to judge stuff as well. So lots and lots of people who know heaps of stuff will be coming to look at your work if you enter. And you too can get that industry feedback that's really important. Like the people who are doing the judging, they've been there. They've done it. They're at the top of their game in the world. And they're willing to have a look at your work and tell you what they would like to see you do next time or how you can improve your own skill set and get that job work on that career or move forward and doing the things that you want to do. So thanks for signing into the live stream this week, everybody. I know it was a little bit different to stuff that we normally do, but if you liked it, let us know. If you've got more ideas for different things we can do on the live stream, please tell us. We love to hear from our community at rpf.io slash home. Let us know anything you've got. If you'd like to be on the live stream and you have an idea for a project you want to share with other people, please get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Right? This is a community-based thing, and you are our community, so we'd love to have you involved. We'd love to see you get here and have a chat with us on the live stream sometime or share your work with the other people who'd like to learn more about the things that you can do, and you can pass your skills and knowledge on to them. So we'll catch you again next week, everybody. Same time, 2 p.m., and um, we'll be here waiting with some more code and some more making stuff. So carry on, keep doing stuff, and we'll catch you later.